Warning, working on high voltage electronics is dangerous. Devices such as CRT displays can harm you, your environment and others. Please do not copy any of the procedures shown in this video. This video is not an instructional tutorial and is presented for entertainment and reference purposes only. Hello and welcome back to youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. Now, before we start, I do have an announcement which will be at the very end of this video. So do make sure you stay for that. So do you remember the live streams I did earlier in the year? That's 2022 at the Cambridge Retro Festival 1982 edition. If not, allow me to refresh your memory. Anyway, welcome to the car park of the Centre for Computing History here in Cambridge, England. Uh, you're live here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Um, yeah, so let's see. Let me just, let me just go ahead and show you something quick. So this is the free stuff slash stuff. It's not free table of sort of joke. And yeah, that's a shame. I wonder one of those monitors. Free but dead. And painted black, which is weird. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted. And there's, yeah, there's stuff here. Well, in the end, I did pick up the Philips CM8833 Mark II CRT monitor. So was it a clever move or have I just carted e-waste halfway around the country? Well, we're going to find out. But before we do, let's take a moment to say a huge hello and welcome to returning sponsor PCBWay.com, your one-stop solution. Alongside their high quality and fast turnaround turnkey PCB manufacturing, PCBWay also offers services in 3D printing, injection moulding, CNC machine tooling and sheet metal fabrication, in addition to regular offers on production services and purchasable products. And not forgetting the amazing PCBWay maker community with hundreds of products being shared daily. I'm really excited to be working with PCBWay once more. So don't miss out. Start your maker journey today. Sign up for your free account at pcbway.com. Details and links are in the description. By the way, welcome to the summer house. Uh, last time we did any recording in here was, I think ironically, exactly 10 years ago. And that was before I was doing Wi-Fi Sheep when I did a uh, video looking at a performer, Macintosh Performer 630. Anyway, here it is. So this is a Philips, it's a CM8833 Mark II. And I know that because the serial number is here on the, um, or the model number rather, is printed on the um, front bezel. It's in horrible shape. Um, it's free because it quite clearly states dead, no power, free. Now, these monitors are highly sought after, especially in the retro computing world. They're one of the last RGB uh, desktop monitors I think was ever made. These things are made from between about 88 to 94. And they were kind of, they worked wonderfully with things like Atari uh, ST, the Commodore Amigas, Acorn Archimedes, some PCs. Um, but they also are sought after because they have composite video and sound which means anything that can output composite video uh, so a lot of video game systems NES stuff like that will work with this as well so I've wanted one of these and to get one of these in any kind of condition of the likes of eBay they're now going for hundreds about 150 to 200 300 pounds and that's if they work so I'm quite I guess you could say lucked out to pick one up for free but it clearly doesn't work, it says it doesn't work, and the cosmetic condition is absolutely appalling. Uh, this one appears to have been spray painted black at some point in its life, um, but didn't do the parts that were difficult to do. Um, so it's obviously never been taken apart, it was spray painted, assembled. Um, they don't come in black normally, um, and you can tell it's an amateur job. And you can see the amount of scratches, dents, and there's some quite big kind of uh, gashes and things taken out of plastic. So cosmetically, this thing is not great condition. And I'm guessing for the museum where it came from, Cambridge, that it doesn't look that great. 
and it doesn't work and I'm assuming they've probably already got a stock of these um, several are actually on display currently in the museum um, so uh, I suppose other than maybe parts but then you've got to store parts that have no real value hence the thought they'll give it away and see if someone will come along and try and fix it it does appear to be all there as I said I don't think it's ever been opened the door we're lucky to have the door because a lot of them have the door missing but the clips are broken so the door comes off so that's something we'll have to look at but as for today I'm not going to address the cosmetic condition I'm going to see if we can actually get this to work so it says dead no power however what I think I'm going to do is put some power through it so I've got a standard kettle lead and it has the three pin kettle lead on the back or the plug and the nice thing about UK systems is that we are actually earthed. We have a, a centre plug. So did Europe actually, but their centre plug is kind of indented in the middle. But the British plugs have an earth, so we can earth this, which we're going to need to do, especially if we're going to go into it. Now, before I go any further, uh, a bit of a disclaimer that working on cathode ray tube CRTs is inherently dangerous to both you and others around you. Please, please, please do not use this video as a tutorial and do not attempt to recreate anything I show you. Also, we're dealing with things like power transformers, mainline uh, mains power transformers, and there's risk of fire and electrocution. All sorts of things could go wrong. So I am in no way qualified to show you how to do this or to give you technical advice. So please, please, please do not attempt to recreate this. If you do, you do it completely at your own liability and risk. With that said, let's put some power in then. And I'm going to try, let's turn this around. Okay, so the first thing I want to establish is, again, you'll have to excuse the, uh, the chickens. That's our outside, there's a lot of outside noise. <laughs> that's, that's the chickens making a lot of noise. Right, uh, the first thing we need to establish is, is it just the power switch that's bad? Or has this monitor got other issues? So, let's put some power through. Okay. Remember which side the switch is on. Ah. Again, I appreciate there's a lot of background noise, but let me just put the mic up to the side of it. Let's just move this around slightly. I think it might be better the other side, actually. So you can hear this. Okay. I'm going to power back up, see if you can hear this. Yeah, so hopefully you heard there a very high pitch, almost like whine or scream, and that is very problematic with these monitors and indicates that the flyback transformer inside the screen has actually gone bad. Again, very common reading up with these. So we know the power switch on this seems to be working fine, which is great, but the flyback's gone. Now, without the flyback, it's not capable of generating the high voltage needed to put a raster on the screen. Um, so hopefully if we were to replace the flyback, this monitor might actually spring into life. But of course getting flybacks for nearly 30, 35 year old monitors is easier said than done. And I had to search around and I did find a company in the Republic of Ireland of all places that still had stock. And so I ordered, and here it is. This is from HR. I think this is new old stock. This is the HR7533 flyback power transformer. So we'll take a look inside and there we are. And it consists of, let's take this band off. Here is the main transformer itself and these flybacks have this sort of uh, bolt that runs through them. I need to make sure we remove all the um, packing material. 
it has a kind of a wax filled transformer there's two adjustment pots here and you then have this is the main cable that goes to a suction cup that goes to the top of the CRT that's the anode and then these two I believe go to the neck board and have to be manually wired in so that hopefully should be the correct part but it will need some adjustment in order for it to work properly in the unit okay so the moment of truth we're going to try and take this unit apart now bearing in mind it has just been on so it's highly likely there's still going to be high voltage inside so we'll take off the power and i think it should be i think a phillips product should be a phillips crosshead screwdriver bit of luck we should be able to hopefully and get into this okay I think that's the main screws out so we should be able to pull the there they're coming out now oh there we go bearing in mind I don't think this thing has ever been apart before so I've just clip screws that are falling out the case One is a little screw down here, which I just wonder if that needs to come out. I've got a small crosshead. Yes, it's possible that needs to come out as well. Ah, there we go. There we go. Just take that out. Oh. Looks like you can see that it looks like the speaker cables have been detached or have come loose at some point. As if this thing actually had stereo speakers in it. And we'll just take that off then and let's have a look what we've got going on inside. So everything other than being rather dirty looks okay. I am just wondering is that dust or is it sort of cigarette tar or something like that, which is a possibility. Um, the problematic problem comes from up here, be very careful not to touch stuff, but this is the anode cap and it runs down here and it's this flyback transformer here that's gone bad and that's the part we need to replace. It's also worth just having a look around the board to see if there's any other capacitors or anything. Eventually it will need recapping but you're looking for if there's any bulging capacitors or anything that's kind of leaked and so far it's looking alright but then again I don't think this thing is actually fired up properly to uh, look at reforming any capacitors or anything like that. However before we continue I'm going to discharge the CRT. Now modern CRTs do have what's called a bleed resistor which is meant to take the high voltage that collects here on the back of the tube that should be in camera now I am, on the back of the tube um, and that should mean that there isn't any lethal volts. The lethal voltage comes from people touching the back of these tubes, either when they're live or when they've still got voltage. But we shouldn't rely on the bleed resistor, because well, at the end of the day we simply don't know. So I'm going to be very careful. And I'm going to wear gloves for this. Now some YouTube and some tech channels sort of just seem to dance around the back of CRTs without a care in the world, but I like to take precautions. So I'm going to bleed the uh, anode off ourselves. So I have here, this is a screwdriver, it's a crocodile clip. I'm going to put the other ends onto something that's earthed. So onto the earth, on, there's a switch here. This green and uh, yellow stripy cable is the earth. And we're going to run our screwdriver underneath. I'm going to touch, there's two metal prongs underneath and we're just going to make sure that we're touching those and that will basically create a direct short to earth and um, take any residual energy straight out of the CRT which is what we want. But while I'm here what I now want to try and do is to get the, get the pin off 
pins up the cap if I can. There's two springs um, that hold this in. There we go. And that's now taken the cap off the back of the CRT. And that should now be safe to work on. So the next thing I'm going to do is we'll take the neck board off, which is this board that sits onto the back of the CRT tube. Now again, we have to be careful. We don't want to break anything. Okay, there we are. Okay, I'm just very carefully removing most of the detachable cables. From the neck board. And then there's two here that are soldered in and we're gonna to have to cut. So these are cables coming off the flyback. So it's important to make a mental note that on this one, it's dark cables going to the top plastic hub here, and the light is there. Because we're going to cut these both. There we go. Just cut this as well and that releases our neck board we'll keep that safe for the moment so I think now we should be able to get the main PCB out well we'll just have to inspect to make sure there's nothing else attached there is so we've got things like the main earth which is here and this needs to come out as well uh, and it's just a, it looks like a plug fit, luckily, so I think we'll be all right. And uh, just see if there's anything else I need to detach, and then we'll get this board it should slide straight out the chassis. So I'll just do that right now. Okay, so that's come out now. Is the uh, main ground for the monitor, and the rest of this board I think is more or less going to come out now. I have noticed that what I think is the power LED was never connected in the first place, which does lead me to believe someone has been in this monitor in the past, um, quite possibly the museum. And then we just move that out of the way. I'm being careful because it's possible the capacitors might still have some charge in, and we just want to just treat the thing with respect, just be very careful. This is the main video signal. Take that cable out. Something else catching, if I can see what it is. Oh, oh, there's another earth on the. Uh, I missed that. It's another earth or ground pin. There we go. Make sure I take that out. There we go. Oh. And that's the board successfully removed from the main chassis. Well, here, let's just take a quick look at the CRT itself. It's very dirty, but I just want to have a look closely here. It's going to focus. There we are. I'll just see if there's any decoloration. So this is the gun array. There's three guns, red, green and blue, in the back here. And sometimes on CLTs that have had high hours or have gone a bit gassy, um, bear in mind this is meant to be a sealed vacuum chamber, uh, you can get like a purple burn or discoloration kind of around the rim of the glass, but they're all looking they're all looking really good. And I don't see any broken internal wires in the contacts. So that's all looking, looking rather good. Ideally, just to clean the CLT, I don't really want to do 
much else to it. We don't want to be adjusting anything unless we have to. So all these magnets and everything can stay pretty much as is. Um, by the way, the, the big cable here, that's not earth, that's the degaussing circuit. So there's a, a band, if you like, that runs around the outside of the CLT and that just degausses it on boot up. Um, the others on the other side here, this is the um, the earth for the uh, CRT that's part of the bleed resistor circuit. So uh, that's all looking good. At the moment, I don't intend on this video anyway to take the CRT out of the plastics. Although obviously when we come to try to do something with the plastics, we probably will end up having to uh, do something. But this does need a clean at some point. Before we start trying to desolder things, I'm just going to give this board very quick spray down with uh, some compressed air just to give it a quick clean like that and then we'll uh We'll turn the board over and have a look at what we need to do to get desoldering. Okay, so this is the underside, and you probably can't see it that well, but this is the flyback transformer here. So it's these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, now, ideally, you'd have a fancy desoldering tool. I don't have anything like that, so I'm going to have to put some extra sol heaters up, put extra soldering flux on, and then use a good old fashioned uh, cheap solder pump it's one of these and um, sort of push it down put it over the hole and, and hope it kind of pulls something up so this is going to take a while and be rather tedious so I'm going to get the soldering iron heated up and once I've got this out uh, we'll cut back what I will say is if you're going to do it the way I'm going to do it which is the tedious way um, you do have to be very very careful not to lift or damage any traces on the board because PCBs I mean this PCB is what 30 40 years old and they weren't as good back then as they are now. So lifting traces is a very real possibility. Okay, that took a little bit of time and persuasion, but that failed power shot sauna is now out. I had to cut the clips on it, but that's now out. And I don't think I've destroyed the PCP, which is good. So we'll pop that to a side. Take our brand new one. And hopefully this should, if we get this right, should just about fit. But what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to grab a crosshead. And there's two pots here. And I'm just going to turn this one, which is screen. And I'm just going to, if I can, just going to turn screen voltage down just a little bit before I put this in. Also just make sure there's no packing material stuck underneath, which there isn't, so. Right, so this goes in. Hopefully this will just fit in perfectly. With a new power chat somewhere in, it's at a really awkward angle. I'm just trying to get some new solder on so we can get this secured in. And finally, there we go, and there is the new flyback installed on the main monitor PCB. So, now what we've got to do is establish where these two wires go. <laughs> And that means we need to turn our attention to the neck board. So here's the neck board and these are the two wires that we spliced off. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's very tempting just to reattach these two wires to the two wires that we've now got um, on the new flyback. But it's never a good idea to try and splice things uh, internally, especially as these are handling high voltage. So what we're going to try and do is get into this little plastic box here and also, if possible, 
well I know it's possible we'll desolder what's left of this wire here so this is the negative and that's the positive so we we'll turn that over and it's J11 which is just here so again put a bit of flux on that and we'll get that wire out I don't think it's going to be too difficult. Certainly not going to be any more difficult than the uh, flyback. Right, I've got the uh, the plastic cap off the top, but unfortunately it was so brittle and so stiff that it's um, actually have slightly chewed up the uh, the side of the um, plastic unit. I don't think, however, that's going to be too much of a problem. So inside, the wire itself is just crimped into a little. Uh, oops. It's just crimped here into a little cap, so if we can just open that out. Oh. There we go, the wire comes out like that. So that kind of sits like that, and we can just push our new piece of wire through from our other board. Also, when I've done that, I'll solder the other side back into J11 here. Okay, I don't want to tempt fate, but I think we're done. So, neck board. Put its wires back in. The flyback is now installed. So that suction cup here has got to go back or well, replace the one we've taken off on the back of the CRT. Um, yeah, I think I've got the red. But I'm pretty sure I've got red and uh, black the crap way around. Um, at least like blooming well, I hope I have. <laughs> Okay, so I think the final thing to do is probably to give the CRT a bit of a clean because the back of it is really quite horrible in all honesty. So I've got some uh, sort of uh, industrial power wet wipe type things. Um, again, this hasn't been on since uh, we did the test and it should be fine, but we can just try and use it just to try and clean up back of the CRT a little bit. I don't really want to spray anything or soak it, but I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think a bit of an internal uh, rub down is going to hurt it. So I'll just do that and then we'll get back to uh, possibly reassembly and try a power up. Okay, so everything is back in. I'll just show you the side of the monitor here. So that's everything in. The anode cap is back on. I'm going to do a test now with the uh, monitor kind of outside the case. This is inherently dangerous. So again, it's strictly the case of do not, under any circumstances, do what I'm doing, because this is not safe. Um, right, I have bought with me powdered fire extinguisher, which I'm going to have on standby just in case this doesn't go well. Um, but what I want to do is do a power up and see if we're going to work or not. So. We've got power to the extension board, the kettle lead is in, the switch is off. I'm going to put the, yeah, I'll put the switch into the on position. And I'll power up from the mains. So, uh, wish me the best of luck, because I have no idea what's going to happen. Okay, that's power. Because I'm not running a video signal through. Not seeing any glow from any CRT. I am hearing high voltage. Hmm. Okay, let me have a little uh, 
play with this just to make sure everything is okay. Uh, so there might be a, a larger problem, but... Uh... Right, so normally in most videos by this point, I've done something, it's been successful. Thank you, don't forget to like and subscribe, etc, etc. But this one has got me stumped. Now, I admit, I haven't done the normal testing using voltage meters and running through the schematics. And huge thanks to all that did reach out to me on Twitter on this. To be honest, this is a little bit outside my area. And sometimes you have to hold your hands up and admit you need help, both in life and in retro computing. So I think that's what I'm going to do. If anyone watching has any ideas or has gone through this with a Philips or Magnavox CM8833 Mark II, I'd be rather interested to hear more. The monitor's not in cosmetic shape. I'm £50 down on the new and not working flyback as it is. So yeah, help. I'll keep you updated across the Wi-Fi Sheep social media. You can follow me on Twitter, by the way. It's at Wi-Fi Sheep. That's at Wi-Fi Sheep. Right, a quick announcement. November the 5th and 6th, 2022. I'm back exhibiting at the Cambridge Retro Computing Festival. This time it is a fully open and packed event showcasing all things computing and gaming. I intend to bring a few things not seen here on the channel and the latest builds of our Tiny Basic Computers project that includes the four colour system. For full details, see events.wifisheep.co.uk. That's events.wifisheep.co.uk. Right, so if not done so already, please do consider liking and subscribing. And I hope to see you real soon right here on the channel. Thanks so much for your company and bye for now. Bye.